mathematics, the leading genetic genome researcher said, concerning these genetic differences, now the genetic difference between human and his nearest relative, he's not a nearest relative, folks, but Barney believes he is, okay? I know a good job we can get for Barney, too. Um, he says, we're relative to the champion. He said, this is at least 1.6%. That doesn't sound like much, but calculated out, there's a gap of 48 million nucleotides, and a change of only three nucleotides is fatal to an animal. There is no possibility of change. So two major points I would like you to address. Number one, the similarities could just as easily be demonstration of common creator. Why aren't students taught that? Why are they only taught one religious viewpoint as opposed to all religious viewpoints? Secondly, the uh, so-called ancestors, no fossil would demonstrate evidence for evolution. Absolutely none. It couldn't count in a court of law. Because, as I said, you can't prove it had any kids. Why on earth would you think a bone you found in the dirt is evidence for evolution? It can't be. If evolution is really true, let's watch it happen. Let's see it. And the argument will be, well, it happened so slowly we can't see it. Okay, then it's not science. It's something you believe happened, but that's not demonstrable in a laboratory. It's not testable. It's not part of science. And I just, I, I resent them cutting down our perfectly good trees to print that stuff in a textbook. You know, where's Al Gore when you need him? Okay. Um, so, my answer to your question is very simple. Yes, there are thousands of similarities. I don't know if this was a human or an ape. It doesn't matter. It, would, it wouldn't count as evidence for evolution because you couldn't prove it had any kids. Okay? If there are species of extinct apes, and I'm sure there are thousands, you know, things that have gone extinct over the years, thousands of animals have gone extinct. So what? That doesn't prove evolution either. That's the opposite of evolution. And so if you're using tax dollars to line these things up in your classroom and say, boys and girls, see, can't you see the similarity here? And some kid in your class says, uh, yes, teacher, doesn't this prove a common designer? You should say, well, you're right. It certainly could prove a common designer. We don't know. Why on earth are we discussing origins in science class anyway? Origins is not part of science. You, you're going to make somebody upset no matter which way you discuss it. Okay? Origins has no business being involved in, this, in the school system. It just shouldn't be discussed. Bigger question yet is, should we even have public schools? We'll get into that some other time. Thank you so much. The second question that we want to present to our debaters is what is the origin and the age of the universe and what is your method of determining it? And uh, Dr. Wagner, you will have uh, 17 minutes and uh, Dr. Hovind, you will have 10. Sorry, just take a second to get my um, monitor uh, working again. Well, I think I can, uh, let's see here. Uh, well, I think I can assure both uh, you, Dr. Hovind, and um, everyone here uh, that I will never again teach uh, about Nebraska Man and uh, Piltdown Man. Uh, those are permanently out of my lecture notes for all time. Um, thank you. Uh, right, and um, uh, yes, I did note uh, uh, Java Man, which of course was um, you know, simply a, a, in the original find, it was a skull cap and a leg bone found from, uh, uh, found from, um, uh, found a long distance away. Um, I do hope you will allow me to uh, mention the uh, Sangiran uh, two skull, uh, which turned up uh, in the, uh, I don't remember the exact date, I believe it was in the 1980s, uh, which is basically a skull with most of the face uh, still present. Um, I can drop Lucy if, uh, if you really think I should, uh, but a um, fossil found in a cave in South Africa called the Schertfontein, uh, known as uh, Littlefoot, uh, has recently turned up, uh, which they are still getting out of the ground, but it appears to be a complete um, Australopithecine. Um, if you'll let me teach about that, I, I suppose that's, that's uh, fair. Um, Neanderthals are old men with arthritis. Uh, yes, of course, the first complete Neanderthal skull found at a place in France called La Chapelle aux Saints uh, was definitely an old man who was stooped with uh, arthritis. Uh, the, uh, the baby Neanderthal skeletons that have turned up at a few locations in Europe probably weren't, uh, but I won't teach about those if you'd rather I not. I certainly don't want to upset, uh, um, upset anybody. Oh, incidentally, uh, this is... Um, uh, reconstruction of the skull of Peking Man, 
And you did mention that all ed evidence had uh, disappeared, so I guess I won't uh, teach about uh, Peking Man, except uh, the location was reopened in the 1970s. More bones have been found, and very similar bones to this have turned up elsewhere. Uh, so if um, uh, Arkansas law does not allow me to teach Peking Man, maybe it will allow me to teach about Yun Shai Man, for in instance, uh, which is a, a substantially complete uh, skull. Uh, so thank you for giving such an excellent, uh, excellent, excellent answer to, uh, uh, to my, uh, my question. Uh, what I believe we're supposed to talk about now is uh, age of the, uh, of the Earth, and it is obviously between six and 10,000 years. That's what's printed in standard commentary on the King James. 6,000 plus a little bit was the age arrived at by, um, uh, by an Irish archbishop, uh, Archbishop Usher of Armagh uh, doing the calculations back in the uh, uh, 1500s. And I really don't want even to attempt to defend the idea that the Earth could possibly be old. Uh, what I do have, again, is another, um, an, another question that's been, been troubling me uh, a, a great deal uh, that comes from time that I've spent going out into the Mojave Desert of um, uh, southern Nevada, and uh, southeastern California. Uh, yes, the largest city in the Mojave Desert is uh, Las Vegas, uh, but there's, um, uh, there's nothing wrong with Las Vegas that couldn't be cured with a nice little fire and brimstone shower, if you ask me. Everything you've heard is true, but the surrounding regions are uh, quite nice. And uh, this right here is uh, Owens Lake, uh, California, just outside the small town of Independence. Uh, as seen from the, um, uh, that's probably the Inyo Mountains in the foreground with the Sierra Nevada uh, in the background. By the way, the Inyo Mountains have a uh, very steep uh, slope uh, that's nearly vertical, uh, that's um, affectionately known as the uh, Inyo Face. Thanks. It was it was a sympathy laugh, but I appreciate it anyhow. Right. Owens Lake used to be a lake, and uh, there used to be water in it. There used to be steamboat service across the lake, freighting uh, silver that was coming from the mines up in the mountains down to uh, the nearest town of uh, Independence, California. Owens Lake, unfortunately, dried up in the early 1900s. Uh, Los Angeles, the city, bought the rights to all of the streams and the springs that flowed into Owens Lake and kept it moist. Those have all been diverted into an aqueduct. And Owens Lake is now Owens Dry Lake. And it's visible as that white patch off in the, uh, in the distance. There is no more water except for a few days after the occasional rainstorm. What it's left behind is, well, what it's left behind is bad news for asthma sufferers because the dry dust on the uh, floor of the lake is now free to blow and uh, generally makes life rather miserable uh, when a windstorm comes through, as they often do out there. Uh, but most of the surface of the lake is made up of salt. When you get a lake that uh, is cut off from uh, flowing out to, um, uh, to another source, be it another lake or the ocean, uh, when that happens, there's nowhere for the water to go but through evaporation leaving salt behind. So a lake that cannot flow out will become increasingly salty, as we've seen happen in uh, the Dead Sea, for example, which has no outlet to, uh, uh, to the ocean. If you were to drive maybe 75, 100 miles, uh, you would come to a location called Badwater, uh, which happens to be uh, 279 feet below sea level. So I can say that visiting there was uh, definitely the low point of my career. It's the lowest spot in the Western Hemisphere. And it's what's left of another dried up desert lake. Uh, and we know this because, um, well, it was dry when uh, Europeans came through. But if memory serves, there have been some Native American artifacts that have been found on the shores uh, that include things like fish hooks and fish traps and things of that sort. So we know that there were people there at a time when bad water was still an isolated uh, lake. And it apparently has grown extremely salty, saltier and saltier. The water has left. And we end up with a flat valley 
that is completely crusted with salt. That looks like snow. It isn't. Uh, and if you dig down, you get 10.